Now we take a closer look at the Hispanic business community on the Sun Coast with our special guests. Max Borges is a member of the Florida Commission on Hispanic Affairs. Millie Ortiz is a business analyst with the Minority Business Development Center. The center is operated by the accounting firm Laventhal & Horwath and is funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce. Welcome to the Sun Coast Business Journal. Max, here at the beginning, let's look at where the Hispanic business community stands here in the late 1980s. The uh, 1980s, as you probably recall, was uh, called by President Carter as the uh, decade of the Hispanics. And I think that you will find in the Tampa Bay area that has been a tremendous improvement in the last eight years uh, for Hispanics. There are more businesses owned by Hispanics. Uh, there are more professional people in the area. And one of the bad things is that we're improving tremendously with our commerce uh, in Latin America, which I think is going to be an important thing for the Tampa Bay area. Let's look a little bit more at that. This international trade situation really does affect the Hispanic business community uh, uh, greatly, doesn't it, Millie? Oh, absolutely. I think it's another opportunity for minorities in general to take advantage of. Um, in my office, I see it more and more as my uh, clients come in are, and are interested in doing international trade. Many minorities have problems mm -hmm. when it comes to starting businesses and getting the ball rolling to be a very successful entrepreneur. What is the situation in the Hispanic business community? Is the support there? And I'll ask Millie this in a second too, Max. What is the situation? I, I think the support, it, it's getting to be there now. But also in the Tampa Bay area in particular, I don't think the problem is as drastic because most of the Hispanic coming into this area are either professional people or Hispanic that went to a northern state where they established some bases, they, they created some economy, and they're coming down here now uh, with the monies and with the know-how and the know -how, uh, to get into business here. So we're getting the best crop of the Hispanic into this area. So they're really adding to the economy and not taking I it. think they're doing quite well in, in here, and most of the reports that we have of Hispanic coming into the area shows that they are being more successful than even those that are going into Miami. Millie, what is being done to help these people who want to make a, a start, a fresh start here, whether they were successful up north or came from their native country? Okay, one of the difficult uh, parts about coming to a new area is uh, knowing um, where the services are, who the main players are, where do you go to get a particular kind of information, and that's where our agency serves. Um, I consider myself a resource. Um, what I don't know, I know where to go to find out. So uh, when they come in and I do sit with them and we discuss what they want to do, um, I try to open these doors for them. If there were one goal that the Hispanic business community were to name, what would that one goal be, Max? Okay, one goal they like to achieve, I will say, would be more participation. I, I think that there is lack of participation uh, in government by Hispanics. Uh, contracts by, you know, uh, government contracts are not being given by Hispanics in the same uh, percentage that they'd be giving to other minorities. So I think that would be the main goal for us because in order to to be successful, you have to participate more directly with a government which is probably one of the biggest employers in the country. Now, in the Bay Area, it's something like 5% Hispanic population, but that's changing rapidly here and nationwide. Mm -hmm. And in the next 10 years, uh, the figures are going to be very, very impressive. What's being done at this point by the Hispanic community to gear up for those changes with more of their own coming into this region? Well, I think the one thing that we're trying to do is to get together to organize, to um, uh, hold more seminars to network closely. Um, I know I, for one, go out and uh, into the community, and whenever I have a contract that comes and I know that there's somebody, I'll go out there and look for somebody that can do it, you know. And if they have to be certified, which is another long story, then we do this, you know, we help them with the certification, filling out the papers and whatever. But uh, um, that's the one thing I think we need to do is to get united to uh, become more knowledgeable in what's out there, what opportunities out there, as Max said, in the government. Um, what can we do to get a piece of this pie that's there that we haven't touched? Tampa has a lot more today to, um, to offer to a Hispanic that would be uh, debating between moving into the Miami area, mm -hmm. which has the, the attractiveness of having more Hispanics and and more chances of business and so on. Tampa probably will be a little better today for several reasons. The economics of, of Tampa are better. There is less competition in here. Housing is cheaper today mm -hmm. in Tampa than it is in Miami. Um, the, the general life, it's a little less expensive in, in uh, Tampa than in Miami. And 
of course, there are other things, you know, less crime in Tampa than there is in Miami. So I think it, it's becoming, Tampa's becoming attractive for anyone, Hispanics, mm -hmm. Anglos, uh, all kinds of investors, anybody who wants to, to uh, find a good place to live would always would look to, uh, to Tampa, and Hispanics are not going to be any different. You know, Wayne, Max, I'm sorry to say we're out of time for today's program. I'd like to thank you both for joining us on the Tampa Business Show. Thank, thank, thank you for having us. Here's Jeffrey Simon.